In this tutorial we'll build a custom animated splash screen like this in Flare and we'll add it to our Flutter project. Head over to twodimensions.com, sign up for a free account and let's get started. We'll start by creating a new file called splash intro. Then we'll rename our artboard to splash. We'll set the width to 288 and the height to 512. To move the canvas around you can right click with the mouse and drag. Once it's in the center we'll go to the splash and we'll set the background to 181818. Then we can go ahead and import the files that we downloaded. And these are the images that we'll use to create the animation. We'll start off by creating the lines that will animate on the background. You can press V to select the pen tool and then we'll draw a line from the left side to the top right side and we'll give it a curve. We want to keep all these lines separate so we'll always select done editing when finished drawing the line. Then we'll set the thickness to 15 and we'll also set the stroke opacity to 0.1 and the cap of the line will make rounded. Then we can draw our second line and select done editing. The third line we want to curve upwards and for the fourth line we also want to curve upwards but we want it to go down to the bottom of the screen. Then you can double click on the new shape in your design document and rename it to background lines. We'll be animating these lines using the trim path so you can set it to synced. And just to give you an idea of what this does, you can adjust the start value and you'll see that the start point of your line changes. Sometimes Flare does this weird thing where the stroke has the line in the middle. And to get that line to go away, just turn the stroke on and off. Then we can start importing our assets. We'll start with a fold stacks banner. We'll set the scale to 0.2 for X and Y. And then we'll center the image using the alignment tools in the top right corner. We'll do this for all the images. We'll import and set the scale to 0.2. So I'll fast forward through the architecture and the other tag items. And then we'll do the same with the mobile phone and we'll just import that and we'll set the scale to 0.2 for X and Y. And we'll also center this item using the alignment tools in the top right corner. Now we can head over to the animate tab and we can start the animation. We'll start by changing the name of the animation to intro. To start off, the only thing we want to show is the fold stacks banner and we'll hide the mobile phone on the first frame by setting the scale to zero for X and Y. And since we know we want the attribute tags to explode out of the center, we'll move it to the center position of the screen, then head back to the design tab and make sure that the fold stacks banner is above all of the tags so that it draws above it. Now back in the animate tab, you'll see that the fold stacks banner is the only thing that we can see. We'll start by animating the background lines. So go to the left panel and select background lines and we'll put a keyframe for the start value at the first frame. Then we can move to the 10th frame and we'll set the start value to around 60%. Then you can put the frame back to zero and we'll make sure that the stroke starts at zero for the start and the end. And if we scrub through now you'll see that the line grows as we get close to the 10th frame. Then at the 10th frame we also want to set the end to 100%. Then we can move 5 frames forward to the 15th frame where we'll set the start value to 100 and then the end value to 60% which will give us the effect of reversing the motion. Then we'll move another 10 frames and we'll set the start value equal to 0 and the end value we'll put at 25%. Then we can go to the 30th frame and we can set the end value to 0. You can preview this now to see how it's going to look. It just moves the line forward and backwards. Next up, we'll animate the Fold Stacks logo. So make sure that the Fold Stacks logo is selected before continuing. For the first few frames, I want this logo to slowly grow. So you can go to the 25th frame and increase the scale to 0.21 for X and Y. Then you can go to the 30th frame and increase the scale to 0.25 for X and Y. This will give it a nice comical effect of jumping out before it shrinks back down. And for the final shrinking jump, we'll move 10 frames ahead to the 40th frame and we'll set the scale to 0 for X and Y. This should give you a nice and dynamic shrinking animation and we can continue on with the tags. To find the, the best place to start animating the tags, I want to see when it starts becoming visible and that's where I would like to start the tags animation. 
We'll start with the architecture tag, so select that and set the keyframes for the position and the rotation. Then we'll move 5 frames ahead to where the full stacks icon is gone and we will move the architecture up to the left and we'll rotate it anti-clockwise so that it has a little angle to it. So to give the effect of our tags exploding and hovering in space almost, we'll make it move slowly from its explosion last frame up until the first second of the animation. The linear movement of the animation for that last bit will look strange at first but we'll set all of it together when we have finished all the animations for the tags. Next up we'll do the better code tag and we'll go to the 35th frame and we'll set the keyframes for position and rotation. Then we'll move to the 5th frame and we'll move it into its place where it'll be when it's exploded out. You can set the rotation to either way you want to. I'm just rotating in a random direction and then for the first second frame I move it just slightly out a bit and then I rotate it a little bit more. We can then repeat this for the code principles and the productions tag. To give this tag explosion the illusion that it's carrying momentum, we want it to contain its fast paced movement at the beginning and then slowly slow down at the end. So to achieve that you can go to the 40th frame and select all the frames and then ch change the interpolation type to cubic and we will make sure that the curve is fast at the beginning and it slowly gets to its final position. If you preview this now, you'll see there's a little bit of drag on the momentum, but it slows down more naturally than the linear path did. Then I wanted it to float a little bit more before it pulled back in. So you can go to the 15th frame after the first second, and you can just adjust each of the tags just a little bit to make it appear that it's moving just a bit more before it pulls back in. You can adjust your rotation by minor degrees if you want to. Um, you don't have to, but it gives it a better effect. Then we want to make sure that the animation from the first second to the 15th frame after that is not linear because it looks weird. We'll give it a cubic animation and we'll just play around with that curve to make it seem like it's, it's pulling out fast before it comes back in. Next up we can select our mobile phone and we want to start animating it while that little gap is still in the middle of the tags. So you can select the mobile phone and then go to the 20th frame after the first second and set scale keyframes. Then you can move to the 25th frame and you can increase the scale to 0.2 for X and Y. We want the mobile phone to do a little shake as soon as it gets in so every 5th frame we'll rotate to the right and then rotate to the left. We'll start by adding a keyframe on the 25th frame, then moving 5 frames forward and rotating the phone to 7.5. Then we'll move another 5 frames forward and rotate the phone back to minus 7.5. Then another 5 frames to 7.5 and then for the last frame at the 45th frame after the first second we'll set it back to 0. Now I want to use the same scale effect that the full stacks icon goes out with. So we'll start by adding a keyframe at the 45th frame for the scale X and Y. And then we'll move 10 frames forward and we'll increase the scale to 0.25 for X and 0.25 for Y. And for the final shrink we'll go to the 10th frame after the second second and we'll set the scale back to zero. Now the last thing left to do is to animate the full stacks logo back into place before you can see the tags that are chilling there behind the phone. We'll go to the 55th frame after the first second where the phone is about to shrink down and we'll add keyframes for the scale and then we'll go about to the halfway mark of where the phone shrinks down completely and we'll set the scale back to 0.2. So I tried this but the scale the full stack logo showed a bit too early so you can just click on the keyframe and you can drag it to the same position to where the phone is scaled down completely. And lastly we want to give the scale for the full stack logo a little bounce effect so you can change it to cubic and make sure that your curve goes above the final position and then comes back down to that position. The animation looks pretty good. There's just a little bit of blankness when the tags are exploded from each other. So I'm going to add in just an additional line animation for the background. So go to the 40th frame and select the background lines. 
I want to animate the lines while the tags are doing its little slow-mo movement. So we'll go to the point where it's furthest apart and we'll animate the start value from 0 to 100%. Then we can go ahead and find the point where the mobile phone is showing and then we'll animate the end position to 100% as well. That's it for building this animation. There's no empty or quiet parts. So I'm pretty happy with the animation and we can go ahead and export. You can click the export button in the top right corner and I usually export as JSON or just in case I want to read any names of the animations and we can save that as splash.flr. Next up we'll add the animation into the code. Let's create a new Flutter project called Splash Tutorial. And then you can open it in the IDE of your choice. I like to use Visual Studio Code. The first thing we'll do is set up the splash screen for the Android project. I won't be doing the iOS project but you can just follow my setting up your splash screen in Flutter tutorial and you can go to the iOS section if you want to. We will just do the Android section. Go to the Android folder and go to App Source and in the main folder go to the Res folder and in the Values folder create a colors.xml file. Then in that file we will add the resources tags and inside we'll add a color, we'll give it a name of background and we'll set the value to 181818. When that's complete, you can go to the launch background XML and you can now change your, your drawable item to color slash background. There's a link in the description for you to download the zip with all the assets in there that I'm using. We will just be copying all of those assets into its respective dimensions folder and then we'll continue by adding it to the launch background XML. So go back to the launch background XML after you've added the assets and uncomment the item at the bottom and change the source from launch image to fold stacks. And if you run this now, you should see the splash screen pop up with the fold stacks logo in the middle. The package we'll be using to add the splash screen before we show our first view is called Flutter Splash Screen. We'll add version 2.0.1 plus 2 because that's the latest version. Then we can create a new folder called Assets in the Root and we can drag the splash.flr file that we exported into that folder. And the last thing we do for the assets is to go to the pubspec.yaml file and we'll uncomment the assets section and we'll add our splash.flr file in the assets section. Then I'm just going to remove all these comments and the theme so that the code is easier to follow and looks a bit cleaner. Then we can go ahead and import the Flutter splash screen package. And for the home of the material app, we will set it as the splash screen widget. The first parameter is the complete path to the splash screen file. So assets slash splash dot FLR. The second parameter is the page that you want the splash screen to navigate to when the animation is done. Then we'll supply our start animation as intro and then we'll also set our background color to the same color as the background of the splash screen and the animation. To pass in a hex value you put a 0xff and then you put your hex code after that in the constructor parameter of the color object. And just to keep the look consistent and not too jarring when we navigate to home, we'll set the background color of the scaffold to the same color. If you run this code now, you'll see that the app starts up with a splash screen and then in a second or so, the animation plays out and it navigates to the home view. That's it for this tutorial. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any requests for Flare or Flutter tutorials, please let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to my list. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week.